Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 670. The topic today is the cure for a bad breakup is not painkillers or numbness. All the way around then. I'll tell you about more of that in a moment. Uh, before I jump in, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what this is about and why you might be here. Um, my name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't already figured that out. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. Yeah, go back to that again. Um, actually, I'm, I'm, <laughs> let me just say it again. <laughs> I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. Yeah, that's right. Helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which led to these talks in the first place, and also why I do this every day, and it's also why I've now done over, over well, 670 broadcasts um, on Facebook Live over the last two years, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. That's the title of all these, by the way. It will be on YouTube later on, in case you're watching it there, wondering how it got to be there. So if you're not watching live on Facebook, you can't interact. That's a hint for next time. So every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page, I'll tell you all about that at the back end. Before I do that, let me just let me talk about the topic, since that's what you're here for, I hope. Um, the topic today, as I mentioned, is um, the cure. The cure for a bad breakup is not numbness or painkillers. I'm going to explain what I mean by that in a moment. I'm presuming, if you're like anybody I know, you've been through a breakup or two, and frankly. <laughs> it hasn't been fun even though I laughed at that one I've been through a few bad ones myself and done some really stupid stuff about it too I've been the breaker up as well as the breaky just to be clear back in my younger days in the younger days I would often basically just numb it out by drinking um, or doing other things to distract myself playing video games doing other things like a lot of people do or I'd actually think I'd just ignore it and move on and go to the next um, relationship as be a painkiller for the past. That's what I meant by painkillers and numbness, by the way, I think. So let me clarify just so you didn't get that. Numbness is basically using some other device, means, or operation to numb out the emotional experience of the bad breakup be it alcohol, drugs, excitement, um, partying, other things, video games, whatever it is. Painkillers, in some ways, for my analogy for that, is going on to the next relationship to numb out what happened before or to ignore what happened before. The problem is neither one of those actually works. They're temporary and they provide some relief, but they don't actually change anything. Numbness and painkillers are in, to use those, let me put it another way. Numbness and painkillers in terms of dealing with physical pain, like if you, if you twisted your knee or twisted your ankle or, or scuffed yourself, and numbness is kind of okay, and painkillers are okay to take away the pain of what's happening. But the wound is still there. And this is the key I want to give you about relationships. And this is a, this is a, um, it's a parallel. It's also, in a way, kind of a metaphor? No. My English skills just slipped out of my head. Okay, I'll come back to that in a second. So <laughs> <coughs> still getting that phlegm out of my throat, such fun. So, as dealing with an injury, taking a painkiller can be very important because you don't want to be suffering in agony for hours and days. And for it to go numb through whatever means, maybe a spray or something like that, will take out the pain as well. However, the, as I said before, the injury is still there. <coughs> Excuse me. I will attempt to get through this broadcast without choking myself and hopefully get some value from this. So the reality is when you have injured yourself, you need to do something about it. The body can heal itself to a certain degree, but it's nice to get assistance, whether it's from bandages, doctor, nurse, somebody. If you've done, especially if you've injured yourself badly, you want to get some professional help to make sure that you heal okay. Let's move to relationships, since that's the context I'm beginning this as a parallel to. In a relationship, when you go through a bad breakup, oftentimes it's, dist it's easy to distract yourself with painkillers, like going to date somebody else, going out for flings, having sex around the, around the town, whatever that is, or basically numbing yourself out by doing various chemical experiences to suppress the experience. Yes, you may get into another relationship, and hopefully it'll work out to a degree. However, the wounding inside, the pain, the hurt, the heartbreak, all those things that happened in that bad relationship breakup, the same as if you broke your ankle or something like that in a physical injury, 
won't heal itself. That parallel is very accurate for me. You know, they say time heals all wounds. Not so much the case in physical injuries, nor in emotional upsets and injuries too. Going through a bad breakup is not something anybody wants to go through, I know. And it's not something I recommend, and frankly, it's not fun on anyone's behalf. Maybe, the, maybe if you're breaking up with somebody else and you're making their life miserable, maybe you get some joy out of that, although it's usually pretty selfish. But the point I want to make again is that, you know, if you break your ankle, you go get, get support from a surgeon. You may get painkillers and you may numb it out, but it won't fix it until you get some professional help. You see where I'm going with this. If you are in a, having a bad breakup relationship, you've basically injured your heart, energetically speaking. And so your emotional state, your emotional response is going to be limited because you can no longer, no longer fully express. If you're like me, which would be weird, but if, <laughs> but if you understand it the way I understand things, meaning that if you look at relationships as something you want to fully express in and fully be available to and fully love in, you're going to shortchange that relationship if you don't heal your heart from the previous one. That's just the way it is. The, the truth of this message, as I, was, I, mean, I had an interview today for a, um, um, a summit that's going to come out in June, so I, we did an early recording today, but I really liked it because it really gave me some good... Um, um, chance to flex my muscles in my spiritual teaching, so to speak, but it was really good. So it's been buzzing through my head right now. So what I'm talking about here is a very simple analogy. Physical injury that requires a doctor's help that can be numbed temporarily by painkillers. Which side I was doing that on? Or relationship breakup that really hurts and wounds your heart so you don't have full ability to express your heart in the future again you've numbed out painkillers to get past it and maybe get into another relationship if you do not face and heal your heartbreak it will just get scarred over and it will not be fully expressed again so again you get into a new relationship where you want to fully express and, and share your love and be embracing and fully involved in that relationship and fully express your love to them like you've never had before it ain't possible if your heart's still wounded. This is why I do what I do. This is why I'm, I'm passionate in my work about helping my clients heal their hearts so they can attract a healthy relationship. My focus is not on the dating arena or on getting you out on new dates again until you're already taking care of your heart, taking care of yourself, loving yourself again. So the two things I work on, especially in that area, is to do the healing work from the past relationship because the wounding that's in there from the heart breakup is about as bad as if you broke a bone it requires some professional help yes i'm a professional <laughs> secondly a lot of what i do with my client a lot of work i do with my clients help them to really fall in love with themselves again because a lot of times after a breakup and a wounded relationship the support for ourselves is gone or or diminished i'll put it that way so the ability to love ourselves and fully express ourselves is often um, marred by that past breakup. So in my work with my clients, part of it is the healing of what happened before and to change the perspective of that old, old, um, well, post-relationship self-judgment, recrimination and upset. Taking that, changing it out and clearing it out, cleaning it out, basically. In a very, that's a very simplest way of saying it, but it's what we do. The second part though is to really practice and build up the self-love muscle. And it is a muscle because we get our practice and we don't have that skill set anymore. So working with my clients a lot of the times is that self-love reminder that helps them heal faster because they're actually not looking out there for the love to heal. They're actually looking inside to love themselves and that is a healing agent. If you're carrying old baggage from past relationships and you want to really get forward, move forward in a healthy way, yeah, coaching is what I recommend highly. But even starting to practice with self-love will get you further along the path than if you don't do it. I'm tempted to cough again, so hang on a second. <coughs> Almost done. Trying to get it through this talk without coughing didn't work. Thankfully, the summit interview I had earlier, I, got, I coughed before and coughed afterwards, but during was clean, thank God for that. So, um, to summarize this one, to give you, because I want to get off before I cough too much again, because it's definitely on the back of my throat. After a bad breakup, you want to do some self-reflection, 
self-review, get some guidance, some support, and some counsel, and also really start to look at how much you can love yourself again, because you may well have forgotten how to do that, because most people do, it's what we do. So I'm gonna put a link, two, links in the, two links in the comments, which I'll invite you to check out, one of which is my self-love practice. I have a guided meditation with two audio tracks that will help you rebuild that self-love muscle, as I called it, to really build up that support for yourself so you feel aligned, feel empowered, feel inspired, and know how to love yourself again so you don't need somebody else to fill you up. That's a powerful lesson, by the way. There's also an audio, there's also a guided book in there as well. So two audio meditations and a guided workbook as well. Secondly, I'll put a link in there for a contact form so you can reach out to me. Because if you really are looking for deeper support than just watching my videos, which I know will help. Um, if you hit, click on the contact form, then I'll put the link in the comments for that as well. We can set up a time to talk and I can help you get some clarity on where you want to go. I am here to help. That is my focus, my work, and my job. It's also my mission. And if you are someone who is really tired of repeating the same old thing again in a relationship, feels like you're banging your head against a wall and about as painful, it's time we talked. So I think I've made my point clear enough. Um, let me give you some re um, reminders where you can find my, my broadcast again, because if you've not done my, you're not watching my broadcast before, this is a um, daily broadcast, daily commitment I have to go on Facebook every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Occasionally it shifts time-wise, but every day definitely. And this is a reminder that loving yourself is the key. So watching me on Facebook Live is where you can interact and give comments and everything else. You can also share it out from my Facebook page. I save these to my business page and also to YouTube, so I'll give you the replay links as well. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can join me on my personal page at 5 p.m. Pacific time, as I said, at facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby, which is where I do these live. The replays go to my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. You have to have distinct URLs. And you can watch all my replays through my business page there. Also, I have them on YouTube, which is actually easier for some people to find me. So if you get on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. And all my broadcasts from the newest to oldest are listed there, so you can watch them, enjoy them, and ideally get value from them. Again, I put two links in the comments to help you out with my self-love practice and a contact form for me. Um, and when that's about it, if you have any questions about this broadcast, please put them below. If it's on Facebook or YouTube, I can respond either way. And um, that's about it. I, my reminder is that please, after, if, after you've had a bad breakup, which everyone's gone through, painkillers and numbness don't help you. They just temporarily stop the pain. But the reality is the pain doesn't stop until you do the work to heal it. And that's where my work comes in. I think this made sense. I thank you for watching. I'm going to go clear my throat, ideally. And I'm back in tomorrow, hopefully a bit more clear-headed. And I can tell you more then. Take care of yourself. And uh, where can you love yourself more? Bye.